I think the best part about this season going forward is the fact that there's no more light in the eyes. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I want to start off by saying Happy New Year to you guys at home, and I want to thank you for your ongoing support last season, going into this season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, coming in, yeah, flex. I just want to win, yeah. That was my brain cells going off last year, 2019 being absolutely insane. Not just from a gamer's perspective, but a consumer perspective as well. We saw really good games, we saw mediocre games, and we saw just straight up dog sh games. At the same time, we also got news that there was an announcement for a new PlayStation as well as a new Xbox. Moving over to hardware, we saw companies like Intel making moves into the GPU market, which is Unreal, I don't even know how to take that in right now. Ryzen making significant jumps and, and the GPUs that they're starting to put together that are really shaping the way for, let's be honest, a, a really crazy year. We saw RAM prices actually drop for once, which is awesome. Um, giving us new pricing at an affordable rate, not just for RGB RAM, but those higher clock speeds. You know what really bothered me though? GPU pricing. In 2019 and going into 2020, we're not seeing that price drop that we've been looking for, but it's still better than what we were paying during prime cryptocurrency mining. And that's why I want to talk this week on building a PC on a budget without spending an arm and a leg. I did a little fun project that I worked with with my mother-in-law uh, over the holidays. So my nephew's about 14 and he was looking to get into PC gaming. He's really wanted a PC for some time now. So we thought this would be a great idea to try and get something together for him on a budget uh, without spending an arm and a leg. Now for the build itself, I didn't get any lucrative pricing or any sort of crazy discounts through any of my friends that work at some of the retail outlets, not to name drop. So for the CPU side of things, we ended up going to the Core i5-9400F. No, it's not overclockable, but it does the trick just as well enough. For the motherboard, again, it wasn't about going over the top, it was about getting something that worked and worked well, and for that, I elected to go to the B35M Pro VDH by MSI. Now, when it came to the cooling aspects of the CPU, I kind of pondered this one back and forth. I was like, can we, you know, can we go with a stock fan? Do we go with an aftermarket fan or do we liquid cool? Ultimately, Cooler Master was the company that came through in the clutch and uh, that's what we went with right there. That's the ML240 LRGB. A nice, simple, dual fan, rad uh, RGB option should he decide to use it. I don't think he cares too, too much about that, but it's there. Um, again, something just to keep those temperatures nice and low. For power supply, yeah, I, we, again, we're building this on the budget. We did go to Thermal Take. We went with a 500 watt Smart Series. It's nothing crazy. No, it's not modular, so it's an absolute cable nightmare when you open it up. But again, this is just to get him started, to get him rocking and rolling. Should do the trick. For memory, um, we wanted something that was going to perform, something that he could use XMP for at least and get himself some access to higher clock speed. So for that, we went to the 3000 megahertz uh, Vulcan Z T Force RAM. 16 gigs, easy to go. Yeah, just rock and roll, right? Now, at home, he's actually got a hardwired network, so I'm not too worried about that aspect. But there, there are the few moments where he will come here and he'll want a game and play some Fortnite and Call of Duty, all that stuff. So for that, I don't actually have a hardwired connection here in the house. It is wireless, so I have to be a little bit more mindful of that. So I just elected to go to a simple plug and play wireless, which is gonna give him more than enough speed. We've got great range here in the home. There won't be any drop signals. It's just enough to get him going at least so he can play with confidence. Um, typically, I wouldn't recommend TP-Link to anybody, um, especially these. They're they're throwaways, um, office use maybe when you're in a jam, but other than that, who cares? So then we have the case, and the case again, it's his first computer. I didn't want anything that was too over the top or too extreme. I wanted simple, and simple is what I got. For that, I chose to go Corsair with the Carbide 100R. Um, for 50 bucks, you can't really go wrong. I mean, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and that's How's your computer? It gives you the great little view window. Now, the only complaint I have about this case is that you must size up your liquid cooling uh, before making the purchase. It is very small inside. Uh, 
there, there's very limited room to what you can put in this thing. And if you are trying to put fans into the front panel, be careful. It's a extreme pain in the ass. And if you're not careful, you're gonna run into some problems. So just be mindful of that. Now I kind of cheated the GPU side a little bit. Uh, fortunately enough, I didn't end up paying for the 1060 Founders Edition six gig card. Luckily that was given to me by a good friend of mine. Now to offset that cost to keep our budget where it should be for you guys anyways, you can go ahead and actually find those used on Kijiji or Craigslist if you live in the States and they average for about $130 Canadian. Now, if you've got an extra couple dollars in the wallet and you're looking to upgrade to something a little bit more on the newer side of things, you could go to something like the 1660 Ti or even the 2060. They'll cost you about an extra 230 to $270 on sale. Lastly, we have the solid state drive. We went really simple on that one and stuck to 250 gigs, just enough to kind of get him introduced to the whole PC aspect. If he decides he wants to throw another hard drive in there or more SSDs, those are readily available at a pretty cheap option. Coming into something like an i5, this is gonna be perfect for him. For basic gaming, for somebody that's just starting out, it's a great way to go. No, it's not overclockable as we mentioned earlier, but again, it's gonna be simple enough to get him gaming and this will definitely last him for a few years time. Moving back over to headsets, I actually wanted to talk about something that was really cool. So over the holidays, you probably saw the videos that we launched for both the C-Power and F-Power gaming headset. Now, what's really cool about these is they're basically a refined version of the Spirits headsets, and these are gonna act essentially as a direct replacement to those. Now, the C Power that's in my hand right here is a very simple two channel audio. It's got the swivel microphone that gives you the muting option. So, in the downward position, you'll know that it's on. In the upward position, it's muted, and it's got that little click, which is really cool. Got that volume option right there to allow you to turn everything up and down, which is really neat. And, and again, just a really good build quality, good flexibility. Yes, it's a plastic headband, but of course this is more geared towards our entry level line. The big note to take from this is the fact that it can be used essentially as a multi-platform gaming headset, and that's how it is marketed. There's no inline remote. It's just a simple 3.5 millimeter adapter plugs in right there. You just plug and play. There's there's nothing really crazy to it. it. It's a great replacement to the Spirits. It's definitely a sizable upgrade. And I mean, even for the guys with big heads like myself, it fits like a dream. Um, really simple, easy to use. If you're a mobile gamer, if you're somebody that's into playing on your tablet, or even just plugging into something like an Xbox controller, this is kind of the headset for it. Plug into the One X controller and boom ready to go. Or, sorry, actually, this is a Series S controller, but it's all the same thing. But it keeps everything centralized, it's simplified, uh, it's great. Now, we don't have price and availability on this headset yet, but I promise you there is going to be an Insight video in which you will see all that information as well as our participating retailer. Uh, they are slated for a 2020 release, so you will see them this year sometime in the coming months. When they are ready to drop, we'll let you know and give you more information on that. So if you guys were taking a look at social media over the course of New Year's leading into New Year's Day, we made an announcement about a giveaway, and that giveaway is for this Sede C Power gaming headset. This is not out on the market yet, officially in North America, but we're going to go ahead and give you guys the chance in the month of January to pick that up completely ahead of schedule and check that out. Uh, the details will be posted at the end of this video, which will give you access to all the giveaway goodies, simply go ahead and like and subscribe to our channels, get access, and get set up. That's all we've got this week. I do want to thank you guys for stopping in for Season 2. I'm looking forward to the next couple of episodes because I do have some really cool stuff cooking up for you guys. Until next time, feels good to do this again. I'm Mikey. This is Sadie's TV. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coming in, yeah, flex, 
I just wanna win. Yeah. LA BB, who we running with? Yeah. Two, two, three, three, I'm on 10 again. Yeah. State your name. Bibbing dope on flame.